Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 232 of Category 5 Technology TV. Nice to see you. I'm Robbie Ferguson. I'm Krista Wells. You know, it feels like it's been months. Months. It's been months. Like two of them. Mm-hmm. I forgot what you all look like. What have you been up to? Hmm. Me? Oh. Yeah. Well, well, I know. You're not usually someone... interested in me. So, no, I'm, I'm you just know. asking for the viewers. Oh, well, you know, school. <laughs> a lot of school. Yeah. Um, and I just recently got back from vacation. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mexico. Or, you know, Mexico. That's rough. Yeah. It was tough. There was so much sunshine and mm. unlimited drinks and all you can eat Lots buffets. Of oh, it was tough. <laughs> it was really tough, but yeah. You got some sun. A little bit, you're, yeah. You're kind of offsetting my tailness, the fact that I match my, my sleeves. Oh, you planned that so though, I, didn't you? I did. The matchy, that's yeah, good. It's yeah, it's coordination. That's nice. Color that's nice. coordination. Mm-hmm. You know what else is exciting? What is it? Hmm, the news. Hmm, let's oh. see what's going on. So, coming up in the newsroom, reports that undermine Einstein's theory of relativity may in fact be mistaken. Hmm. The next generation of smartphone is going to cause trouble for TV viewers. An archive is now available of tweets from the past two years. East Africa's high-speed internet is severely crippled after a ship dropped anchor on the fiber optic cable. Stick around. These stories are coming up later in the show. Oh. Hmm. That'd be terrible. I can't wait to hear. What, the two years worth of no tweets internet? or the anchor? Well, what good is two years worth of tweets if you well, got no I internet? Well, I thought that was the... Oh. Well, you know. That's what I like to do on my weekends is... Yeah, yeah go sit back there and looking read all the tweets. <laughs> two years of tweets. Tonight we've got a lot to cover. Uh, we're actually going to be talking a little bit about a uh, plug-in for the GIMP, GNU Image Manipulation Program. Kind of looking at, you know, how the GIMP gives you an alternative that's free to Adobe Photoshop, but then one-ups them and gives you something a little better. So stick around, Hmm. we're going to be talking about that a little later on this evening. Also, LibreOffice. We're going to be looking at uh, Free Office Suite, which is an alternative to Microsoft's Office product. If you're new to open source, to uh, to Linux, to uh, just the idea of free software, whether you're on Windows, Mac, or Linux, We've got a free suite that is an alternative for Microsoft's Office Suite, going to save you a a boatload of money, and is still compatible with a lot of the same files. So stick around. We're going to be showing you that as well. Good. Yeah. So lots to cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I heard? No. A little birdie uh, told me that yesterday, not today, was uh, Drumstick's birthday. Hey. Yay. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And we actually have a new viewer, a live viewer. Or anyways, maybe not a new live viewer, but... They're in the chat room today. Okay. Um, Bitsprocket. Bitsprocket. It's new. Yeah, nice to see you. Bitsprocket uh, said hello on Twitter, too. We have a Twitter channel. Oh, there it is. It's, it's over there. Oh, At where? Category where? 5 oh. TV. Say hi to us. Mm-hmm. Follow us. We'll say hi to, hi to you, too. <laughs> cool. Yeah, happy birthday, man. Cool. Lots of people joining us in the chat room. Lots of new people as well. Awesome. All right. So uh, get your questions in. Uh, You can email us live at category5.tv or in the chat room, Category 5 on Freenode. And don't forget also we have our mobile site. It's cat5 or mobile.cat5.tv. And uh, we'd love to have you bring that up on your uh, tablet or your your mobile smartphone, Mm -hmm. uh, whatever device that you have. Um, That's a great way for you to be able to tune into the show. I feel like this thing is actually in my way. Yeah. just... You just, you just move that. Okay. Thanks. It's out of the way. Good. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Just put the camera on <laughs> you, just to see if she's paying attention. Uh. We uh, we're really hopeful that you are going to send your postcards. I was telling Krista oh, just before crud. the show. <laughs> Just before the show, I, w- I was just mm-hmm. talking about how the new website, we've been talking a little bit about it over the, the past couple of weeks. We're launching a new website, Beta Start This Coming Weekend. One of the cool features is as you send in your postcards, we're going to actually mm-hmm. put those up on a Google map. You're going to be able to tour the world by postcards from Category 5 viewers. So make sure you send yours in. And Krista, 
How can they do that? Oh my goodness. Well, they can mail them and you can mail them to Category 5 Technology TV at P.O. Box 29009. Sounds like the lottery. Uh, that's in <laughs> Barrie, Ontario, Canada, and postal code L4N7W7. Your last chance to relax is on the way up the hill. With Liquid Image Canada, you can capture all the action like never before without a bulky sports cam. That's a high-definition video camera mask from liquidimagecanada.com. Hands-free HD video recording of all the excitement. Even in low light, you'll capture the memories just how you experienced them. The Summit Series video camera masks in 720p or 1080p. Available now from liquidimagecanada.com. This is Category 5 Technology TV. There's our site, category5.tv. We'd love to have you there. Register on our website. Cool. Nice to see you. Nice to have you here. Well, how would you like to answer some very complex questions? I would love to. Mm, I knew it. Love to. Well, let's roll right in. Our first question right. is from Raven Lords. Hey, Raven Lords. And he says... Oh, hello, Robbie and the Category 5 team. I was just wondering, or just wanting to know, what kind of router would you recommend for my current computer use for running servers and home wireless use? Thank you, Robbie and Category 5 team. Hmm. All right. Well, there's something that I really love about Netgear routers. Hmm. And I think it's because they actually support open source a little more than, than the rest. I'm going to bring up their website. You'll be able to find a, a whole bunch of cool devices on their site. Um, I've actually got one which, uh, which we use here. It's the WNR3500L. WNR3500L. Bring up their site. There it is. And I'm going to tell you a couple things that I really love about this. Okay, you can read through the specs and stuff. I'll put a link uh, to this in the show notes for episode number 232. First of all, my friend... Okay, it's got your internet port and four gigabit ethernet ports, okay? Plus it's got the Wi-Fi with the N300 uh, wireless. It gives you better speed. Let's see, check this out. Performance. You have a 480 megahertz MIPS processor, all right? And here's the kicker. You've got 128 megabytes of flash. What that means to me, because, okay, and, and I'll just, before I get into that, look at this. It's actually designed to support, it's an open source router for Linux developers and open source enthusiasts, okay? That tells me something about the company, about uh, what it is that they're developing here with this router, right? So the first thing that I did when I got this one, it's got 128 megabytes of flash. Your typical router might have 4, 8, even 16 if you're lucky, right? So with 128 megabytes, you can get DDWRT's mega build, dd-wrt.com. And this is a firmware that you can install into that device. All right. See if I can find like a, uh, a version comparison. Just to give you an idea. Here we go. Okay, so. Here we are. So I'm talking about the mega build here, or the big build. And this is the kind of stuff that this is going to give your router. Access restrictions, anchor-free asterisk. That's a phone system in the mega build, asterisk phone system. Bandwidth monitoring, chill spot, whole bunch of stuff. Built-in pro FTPD, right, in the big and mega build. So you can set it up as an FTP server. It's got tons and tons of stuff, even Samba, right? What this does is it gives you a, a, a router that you can go with their stock firmware, which is fantastic, too. You'll be very, very impressed. Or you can install DDWRT's Mega or Big Build, and you'll be able to get all these very, very cool features that are typically only available in a very expensive router, right? Mm -hmm. And you're looking at it, it's a It's a cheaper device as far as 
the price. Let's see if I can find the price. I'm buying from Netgear on their site. Must be free. I don't see a price. Free. Here it is. You won't believe with all those features. Okay. Now, I think I paid about a, I don't know, 120, 150 maybe here in Canada. So price may be different where you are. But with that device, because it's got so much RAM, uh, so much flash memory, you can install that that DDWRT Mega or Big Build, and it gives you tons of very you know what would normally be very expensive features. So check that out, and it's a good diehard uh, router as well. Again, links will be in the show notes for episode number two thirty two. And thanks for the question. Agamotto actually has a, a comment here. He says mm -hmm. that you might want to explain what the difference is between a router and a gateway. Just a good question. I don't know. Well, a router typically would have a gateway, but a router, this, this particular router has a dual level firewall system, right? So it's going to protect you. It's going to bring in your internet and then it's going to connect to the internet and then it's going to distribute it to all of your other computers, right? Yeah, cool. that's what a router does. So that's that's what you'd be looking for. But the uh, but wi with the upgrade to DDWRT, you get all these bonus features, and then it becomes like a little mini server. It's brilliant. And I've never seen Robbie so excited about megabytes before. Well, when you get 128, 128. of them in a router, yes. it's fantastic. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a lot. Like you think 128 megabytes, ooh, ooh, you know, I got gigs and gigs of RAM. Mm -hmm. But on a router, you usually don't get that much. That's why there's all these different versions of DDWRT, right? Because a lot of routers will only support the micro because they've got four, four megabytes of memory, right? So when you go to 128, it opens you up to all kinds of possibilities. It's very cool stuff. Cool. So yeah, I get excited. Obviously, you can hear yes. It, you can hear it in my voice. You can hear the excitement. Not right now. No, no it's gone. It's, yeah, gone. it's gone. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's gone. Hmm. So next question. <laughs> hmm. Oh, Let's see. We have a question from Ron Smith. Hey, Ron. Oh, he says, thank you for taking the time to answer my questions on episode 231. I'm ordering yeah, more cheers. memory, totaling tor 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 <laughs> 16 gigabytes, and will install the 64-bit version of Debian and VirtualBox. If I oh, get Debian. It. Oh, yes. That's, that's what I said. Mm-hmm. I was like, what's D-Ban? <laughs> D-Ban? I said Debian, which is obviously it's, still wrong. It's actually short for Deb, like Deborah, uh -huh. and Ian. Ian. Was it actually? They were girlfriend and boyfriend. No, you're time. making that up. No, Ian is the guy who developed it, oh. and his girlfriend at the time was Deb. So and I he, don't know if you're serious. Are you serious? Yes. I, I am serious. I don't know. She doubts me. Well, you Google it lie a lot to me <laughs> yeah but we're on the air i wouldn't lie oh, okay I not to the to viewers behind the scenes the but viewers, i wouldn't, I wouldn't right. lie to them that's the line mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so anyways mm. Mm -hmm. he says if i get everything running i would like to try to install the headless virtual box setup you showed us okay about my question yeah um is there other ways besides vnc to access linux guests uh, well, on VirtualBox from a Windows workstation. I apologize if I'm not asking the question correctly. Maybe this is better. Or mm. there's other ways to connect to Linux remotely other than using VNC. I have only used VNC on Windows, and it seems slow. Is VNC slow on Linux, too? Mm. Uh, your episodes on Unraid Server was also very helpful, too. I've managed to build an Unraid Server, and I'm not using Windows 2003 server anymore. Yay! Okay. And Unraid Server is much faster. Awesome. Well, thank you for the comments. It's kind of like a comment slash question sandwich. Yeah, it was kind of everything. I was, yeah. uh, and my site's so bad, I didn't know where to stop. I was like, I just got to keep going <laughs> or I'll never find the line again. <laughs> so, so uh, answer it. There okay. you go. Okay, VNC is going to allow you to remote into the visual session of that running Linux box. So you've got X running, you've got the desktop running, and it basically streams that desktop. So, yeah, it can be heavy, but on your client side, so the computer that you are connecting from, you can set the settings so that it optimizes that connection. Mm -hmm. Use different protocols, like X Type VNC is a compressed protocol. You can use, like, Zlib Compression uh, if, your, uh, if your viewer supports it. Like, uh, on your Windows system, get uh, Type VNC from typevnc.org. You can get the client 
and you'll have all different kinds of connection options to accelerate that connection. Because if you're just connecting with just a straight connection, you're probably getting like a full uncompressed VNC session. So it's going to be very, very heavy. It's going to bog down your network, and then it's going to appear slow. So first of all, optimize your VNC session, your VNC connection. Also, though, uh, yes, there are other ways you can connect. Um, depending on what you want to do, if you want to bring up the desktop, you're going to want to look at something called XDMCP. We'll come back to that. If you just want to control the system, um, if you want to just get access to it, you would just use uh, SSH. Install PuTTY on your Windows box or something like that. And then you can SSH into the terminal. You'd have like the black screen and you'd be able to um, control that system. But again, VNC is going to be pretty fast as long as you optimize it uh, from the client end. As far as XDMCP, basically it allows streaming of your X session to another computer. So um, setup can be, um, <coughs> pardon me, setup can be complicated, but it actually takes the X session and instead of presenting it on the screen of the client and then streaming it, it gives you, uh, it streams the data and then your client displays it. So it extends the X session screen. Complicated stuff. The other option, you're using VirtualBox. Enable VRDP in VirtualBox because, again, that's going to give you remote desktop protocol. Windows already has the remote desktop client and allows for some pretty hefty optimizations there. So with v, pardon me, VRDP, you can use remote desktop to connect in to the VirtualBox, and uh, then it will show you the guest, what would be on the guest system. Works a little bit different. You would be connecting to the IP address of the host computer, not the guest, and then colon, and then starts at 0, 1, 2, depending on which, which, uh, which one it is. And also you can specify the port as well. So give it a go. Let us know how it goes, what you find, what you decide on, and what performs best for you. If it's local, though, if you're not going out through the Internet, you should be able to work with any of those options, XDMCP being um, the most geekified way to do it, the toughest way to do it. But will work very well. Um, Bitsbrock mentioning that uh, RDP will also let you use your sound. <laughs> VNC won't. So, yeah, that's true. So, very good. Thank you for cool. the question. Sorry for the cough. Well, I will read this question very slow so you have a time to recuperate. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Oh, this question is from Emil. Sorry if I said... Emil. Is that right? Sorry if I said your name wrong. Emil? Mm-hmm. It says, hi, Robbie. With PHP, you had includes, but with HTML5, this will not work. Is there another option, or must you copy each page again? That's actually a good question. I personally haven't done HTML5 yet, so okay. I didn't know that includes didn't work. So, interesting. Here's the thing, Emil. HTML5 is client-side. Okay. Ah. I, I'm hoping that that made a light go, ding. PHP is server-side. So the trick is, now HTML is, the re is kind of the rendered product. The trick is to generate that HTML from PHP files, right? Because HTML5 it does not have to be static. It can be driven by a PHP backend, right? So for example, if this is the code that you want to output in, P in HTML5, okay? You put that into html5.php, whatever. And then every file that you want that included in, you include it from that PHP file. Because there's a difference. It's server side versus client side. Is, mm. Does that? No, that makes sense. Does that make sense, honestly? Yeah. Because yeah. you're probably at about that place as well. Mm -hmm. where So the PHP end actually generates the HTML5 to output on the client side. So you can do whatever you want on the server side. It's like, consider it like a program. It doesn't have to be flat. And you can include other bits of HTML5 through PHP and then output it to the browser, which interprets the HTML5. Ta-da! Yeah, yeah, do, -do. <laughs> do, 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 do Do I get a cookie? I hope that makes sense. I hope that, uh, <laughs> I hope that helps. Well, I understood it, so that must Excellent. mean that you, you know, explained it half decent if I understood awesome it. Job. Hey, I would uh, just uh, give you a call in the chat room if you've got a question for us. Pop us a message in the chat room, 
It's Category 5 on Freenode. And of course, you can also get there through our website, category5.tv. And uh, we also have live.cat5.tv for those of you who are watching live. Okay, next question. Yay, Chris Ross says, I'm about to hey. buy a laptop and I find it almost impossible to choose one. Hmm. Most of the laptops are op Optimus graphic card. Most of the laptops are Optimus graphic card and NVIDIA. Mm. And NVIDIA does not support drives for Linux. Ah. I heard that there are some open source drives for Optimus. Uh, that Optimus. does not always work. Can you say it like that? Every time you say Optimus, I want to... Open source drive for. I don't know Optimus. if I can do this. Op I can't do that. <laughs> Just try. Come on. Optimus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that does not always work. Um, can you comment on that? Would you buy a? Oh, I lost it. Would you buy a laptop with Optimus graphic cards? Optimus. The, yeah, it seems that <laughs> the only option is to buy an old laptop without op. Without. Uh, um. Optimus. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. You could do it. No, I can't. Okay. <laughs> but that is a very limited way for the movement of Linux. Is an ATI card better choice to look for? Thanks for the great show that you care to demo. Best regards, Chris. Hmm. All right, Chris. Yeah, ATI versus NVIDIA. Big discussion there. Here's the problem. NVIDIA has always been better for Linux. And then along comes Optimus. Right. See, so, I can't do it because you do it so well. Yeah, sure. It pales in comparison. Because I was the first to do it, so now you're trying so to now, it's, now yeah. you're trying to mimic yeah. the way that I do it, and and, and you're gonna fail every time. People are laughing. Yeah, I hope so. Stop pointing when you laugh. At <laughs> least, sorry. Go ahead. Dave Maydu, <laughs> has Nvidia been better? In quotes, I don't know. I mean, it's been kind of neck to neck for a while, but in the early days of Linux, back when Chris Reich was a, a, a wee lad. I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> Chris, I love you, man. Have a drink. And uh, <laughs> here's the thing. NVIDIA was always way more geared toward the, uh, the uh, OpenGL end of things. ATI, they stayed away from OpenGL for a while and stuck with DirectX. So they became kind of the Windows card in the early days. And NVIDIA was the excellent choice for Linux. Now, with Optimus... NVIDIA has brought out a very cool chip for laptops that is, it's a hybrid chip, so it actually has two graphics chips. One of them is the integrated video, probably like an Intel chip, and then the NVIDIA high-end graphics card. So if you bring up a game, it fires up the NVIDIA card, and it's really awesome graphics, but it uses up more power, right? So for power savings, best interest, it uh, will automatically switch back to the NVIDIA, or to the Intel card, the integrated chip. When it's not in, when it's not needed, when it doesn't need all that 3D acceleration and stuff, so cool idea. Where's Nvidia wrong though? Is that they're not going to support Linux with this? I mean, that's a big, big issue. So there's a couple things. First of all, there's you know I'll, I'll mention Bumblebee and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, a package for Linux that allows you to manually. Sorry, it's actually called Bumblebee. Yeah. I thought you were making a Transformers joke. With Optimus and Hey, Bumblebee. I'll bet you that's how they came up with the name. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were being serious. She made the connection. I didn't make that connection. I was like, what a dumb name for a driver. But <laughs> what a, now we got it. Okay. You're welcome. Go ahead. All right. So with Bumblebee, you can switch between the two chips in Linux, but it's a manual process instead of automated. So you would manually choose to run on the Intel chip or the NVIDIA chip. Okay. Not quite as ideal. The fact that NVIDIA is not going to support Linux with their Optimus line of cards is um, disappointing, mm -hmm. I guess you would say, to the open source community, to the Linux community. But they've developed this chip specifically to be for Windows 7. So that's what it is. Any Optimus chip running under Linux, or running Linux on that system, you're going to be using hack arounds. They're not official support for that card, so you're not going to get NVIDIA drivers that support it. So that's the problem. Whether you take that risk, it's up to you. Um, personally, I would go to the store, 
with the chipset in mind and say it's going to be, um, you know, like a, a GE Force or something like that, something from NVIDIA's line that is absolutely supported by an NVIDIA driver. <coughs> so that's, I would, rather than buying the laptop with the Optimus chip and trying to get Linux to work on it, I would probably go hmm. with the mindset that it, it's got to run Linux, so I'm going to choose a laptop that will run it if the store doesn't have it. Don't impulse shop. There will be deals out there. There are other computers out there. That's mm, good the advice. Yeah. Yeah. Bitsprocket says they've got a GTX 480 running Unity with no problems. The GTX line of cards, fantastic. So. Cool. Very cool. I think. Uh, yeah. Just when I, whenever I buy stuff like that, I, I'm, I'm going to take the different approach. I'm going to, I'm going to buy a system that's compatible with what I want to do. Otherwise, you're, you're getting driven by the wrong motivation, I think, to buy a, a system that you have to try to work around limitations mm -hmm. in that system. That's just giving yourself headaches that you don't really need, that you don't want, and that system wasn't built to run Linux. Not that it can't be done. As I say, Bumblebee is out there. Look at the Wikipedia article, I'm sure, makes mention of it. So, And we welcome your comments in the chat room as well. That's Category 5 on Freenode, and you can catch the IRC logs if you're watching this on the download or on YouTube, or on cable, or wherever you're watching this. Um, you can check out the chat logs at category5.tv for episode number 232. Cool. Great. Not a whole lot of, uh, well, I mean, people are chatting in the chat room. I don't see any questions. questions. If anybody, though. If anyone has posted a question, please bring our attention to it. We're just about out of time for viewer questions. So we're going to be jumping into the news in just a few moments. But we'll give you a, just a quick sec, being that we're live and we've got a, a ton of people in the chat room there. Someone must have a burning question. Mm. Like, where does Robbie get all his sweater vests? Where does he? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> Wherever I find them. When you're walking through a store. Oh, look, a sweater vest. <laughs> must Buy have it. it. Must have it. That's a white gray argyle blend. Funny? I have a white fun? black, but not the white gray. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mark M. wants to know how school's going and what you're learning. Um, you know, it's good. It's good. This is actually probably my favorite class yeah. so far, um, mainly because I think I'm learning the most out of it. Criminal justice. Now, what are you learning? Mm, yeah, well, you know, like like uh, stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, uh, we're doing a lot of uh, uh, CSS right now, so... Now, are they getting to CSS 3, or are they staying No, no, CSS 3. I think we're doing that next semester. Okay. But so CSS2, um, more like advanced selectors. So instead of having to give IDs and classes to everything and teach you how you can like select certain uh, certain elements with that way, which I guess keeps your HTML a little bit cleaner, which is good. Um, different kinds of layouts and, mm -hmm. and stuff oh. like that. So you feel like uh, you're going to become a programmer or... Um, I think I'll always still be a graphic designer yeah. that can maybe do some of the smaller websites myself. A helpful skill to have. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Add that to your arsenal. Yeah. And so, As a gifted graphic designer, you can take that and turn it into programs and websites, but just don't ever mm -hmm. get to the point where you don't need to call for oh. uh, that's all. She You're going to call yeah. Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, call Robbie. Come on. He'll just be sitting there and going, yeah. mm, I wish Crystal would call. Look at these awesome sites she's building mm. with selectors. <laughs> oh, that'll be a sad day. <laughs> so sad. I'm, I'm using a lot of jQuery and, and doing some really funky stuff on the new site. Very cool. excited about that. I can't wait to, to show everybody that. Our beta is starting mm. this weekend. You can email me. This is your last chance. We're going to close it down this Friday night. Email me live at category5.tv with V3 beta in the subject line. And we'll add you to the list so you can check it out before everyone else. Give it some testing. Cool. Well, time for the news, folks. Thanks, everybody in the chat room. Everybody who sent in your questions, we appreciate it. It's live at category5.tv if you'd like to send yours in through the week. Chris Reich. Hey, yeah. <laughs> All right, take it away. All right. Well, tonight there are some amazing things in the news. Um, I'm not going to pretend to sugarcoat it, so I'm going to try to pronounce everything correctly, and here we go. So what might have been the biggest physics story of the past century may instead be down to a faulty connection. In September, the Opera experiment reported it had seen new 
Neut- oh, neutrinos? Neutrinos. Yes, that's what I said. Particles evidently traveling faster <laughs> than the speed of light. The team has now found two problems that may be affected their, that may have affected their tests in opposing ways. Ouch. One in its timing gear and one in the, an oh, one in an optical fiber connection. More tests from May will determine just how they affect measured speeds. Ooh. Oh my. That's brutal. Krista, can you imagine? <laughs> Like no. announcing to the world, we were wrong. No, but, but we first we have proven that Einstein's theory of relativity is wrong. Mm-hmm. That's what they claimed that their findings proved neutrinos traveling faster than the speed of light. And then to have to say, uh, by the way, <laughs> there was a loose wire. <laughs> we're wrong. Oh my Oops. goodness. Ouch. <laughs> mm, well, at least it wasn't you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Almost a million UK homes will need to have filters installed to prevent TV interference from 4G mobile signals at a cost of 108 million pounds. Ooh, really? That's expensive. Not each. What? Could you imagine? (laughs) Still expensive. (laughs) I don't know what the the exchange rate is. Oh, this (laughs) crazy radiation. I'm going to need to spend 108 million pounds to fix this. <laughs> I think that's for the country. <laughs> Thanks, Robbie. Yeah. All right, just clarify. That's why I don't come on often anymore. Yeah, right. Robbie makes fun of me when I make stupid mistakes. No, I'm the one who writes it. Yeah, well, I say it. Mm. A smaller number of homes, about 10,000, will need to switch to satellite or cable TV services in order to avoid degraded picture quality. Homes that cannot receive these alternative platforms, such as may be the cause in some rural areas, will receive up to £10,000 each to find a solution to, re- to receive their television signal, such as having fiber cable installed. Companies are now able to search and analyze up to two years of Twitter updates for market purposes, market research purposes. So you can literally see what Robbie had for dinner 19 months ago. Oh, yes. how thrilling. <laughs> it's probably pasta. Mm, same as tonight, right? I don't know. I'm <laughs> just guessing. How did you really? know? Yeah. I should tweet about it so you can read about you it should. in two years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Firms can search tweets back to January 2010 in order to plan marketing campaigns, target influential users, or even try to predict certain events. Until today, only the previous 30 days of tweets were available for companies to search. Regular users can access posts from the past seven days. UK-based DataSift is the first company to offer the archive. Tim Barker, DataSift's marketing manager, told the BBC no one's ever done this before. It's a brand new service that we're bringing online. It's a massive technology challenge because of the amount of data that is being pumped out every single day. He said the company takes in roughly 200 million tweets every day, all of which are analyzed for content, such as whether they were said in a positive or negative tone. The software will also log location this data. This awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Had to say it. You're ruining this. <laughs> I didn't make any mistakes in the past 10 lines. That was good. <laughs> the software will also log location data and social media influence based in part on existing influence monitoring service clout. Private accounts and tweets that have been deleted will not be indexed by the site. Oh, good. Sorry, just back to the... Whether they were said in a positive or negative tone, some mm-hmm. that's someone's. Oh, the software does that it's still. Yeah. That's silly. This past that's, is awesome. That's silly. <laughs> it's a little too spicy for my taste. Oh, negative, <laughs> negative. negative. <laughs> frowny computer, face, computer frowny picks face. Picks up on that kind of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Good job. Uh, okay. <laughs> East Africa's high-speed internet access has been severely disrupted after a ship dropped its anchor onto a fiber-optic cable off Kenya's coast. The ship was waiting to enter Mombasa, one of Africa's busiest ports, when it anchored in a restricted area, taking out, uh, taking out one of only three high-speed connections, which were installed since 2009. As a result, internet connections were expected to slow down by 20% in Kenya, Rwanda, Bur- Burundi, Burundi, Tanzania, Ethiopia, and South Sudan's capital, Ju- Juba. Cool. According to the East African Marine Systems, who owned the cable, it could take up to 14 days to repair. Get the Ouch. full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The Category 5 TV newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a question, or sorry, a news story that you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at category5.tv. From the Category 5.tv newsroom, I am Krista Wells. Thanks, Krista. 
Tonight's news is brought to you by Cordery Electric, the official electric company of Category 5 Technology TV. Get their contact details from CorderyElectric.com. Also, GardenGateFarms.com. For certified organic broccoli sprout and wheatgrass juice, visit GardenGateFarms.com. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and our website is www.category5.tv. We'd love to have you uh, join us on our website, uh, become a part of our, our wonderful community of viewers, and uh, we appreciate each and every one of you who tunes in for the show and uh, who participates on our website as well. Cool. Lots of features to cover tonight. Hope everybody's mm. having a nice time with us, and uh, I'm going to be talking about LibreOffice in a few minutes. We're going to try to get into some information about some security scams that are going on, so stick around. First of all tonight... Mm-hmm. I'd like to look at the GIMP. You know, when you ask me early on in the week if there's anything I've learned new that could be mm. a topic, yeah. um, and I don't email you back for three days, I didn't think that you would, like, you know... Well, fine. You Revenge plan it with GIMP and, you know, try to make fun of Photoshop. And, I'm not making fun of Photoshop. Because it's not free and, you know, stuff like Photoshop that. Like, you do, this, you do this on purpose. Because I, do I don't email you back try right to give my viewers free alternatives mm. to very expensive pieces of software which is amazing free alternatives are but hillary amazing. was on last week she was she would have loved to do this absolutely would you rather me reverse time <laughs> could you <laughs> no i'm kidding this will be great i'm I actually can. i'm actually pretty excited to see I, um, we had this talk it, last week does. that i can't reverse time right now oh but if you wait till just after the show you can we can actually rewind it yay <laughs> but we're live right now. Yeah, and I am, so, in all honesty, this whole conversation. Actually, quite excited to see what Gim can do. So, yeah. regardless of whether I will use it, but it is, yeah, I'm excited to see okay. how how awesome it is. Krista likes to spend a lot of money because she has I don't lots like of disposable to. income. Oh, <laughs> tons of disposable income. So when it comes to mm-hmm. a one thousand dollar piece of software, oh. it, it, oh, yeah, you know. Sure. When you say disposable income, you mean you just you throw mean it away. Pain instead of my mortgage, right? Like sure. Like okay. Like let's buy That's, some yeah. expensive software. Mm-hmm. In rupees, it's like ten giga rupees. <laughs> I don't know. You'll have to That's Google it. Accurate, yeah. Thanks, That's Agamotto. Good. That's his curveball. He makes fun of me with my pounds. What if there's no? But seriously, there are alternatives. Just like you know, if you're running a Windows computer. You can download Linux. It's free. You can install it on your computer. It becomes your operating system. And you're no longer bound by licensing costs, virus protection costs, all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Right? Similarly, if you use Photoshop or you're thinking about getting Photoshop, there are alternatives. One of the best being GNU Image Manipulation Program. So when I say the GIMP, I'm referring to GNU Image Manipulation Program. It's free. Works on Linux. So, hey, if you're running Linux, awesome. But maybe you're not running Linux. You might be on Windows or Mac. It works on those too. It's free for you too. You don't have to run Linux. Okay? I'm not, I'm not arguing. Well, I am arguing. But you're always arguing. I agree. I'm just saying it's very um, coincidental. It happens to be on my week. It just happens to be. I thought you'd be interested because you're all graphic designer i I'm all what? I'm sorry? A graphic designer It was more like that, wasn't it? Yeah, I was like... <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. That, that I'm was, excited, though. Yeah, okay. That was jazz hands. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Do you know I was time? trying to make a point that you're very jazzy. Anyway, there it is. <laughs> Gimp.org. Get it for free, okay? It's fantastic. We're going to look at it in just a moment. Let's grab a picture off of our website. And shouts out to Bitsprocket tonight, who said, I'd love to learn a little bit more about some of the plugins that are available for GIMP. So we're going to look at an alternative to Photoshop's Liquify plugin, which basically allows you to stretch the image in weird kind of ways. I'm going to go to our photo gallery. Let's see if we can find a, an embarrassing picture of Krista. Mm, I'm sure there's a few. Our photo gallery is available on our website, category5.tv. Let's see what we have. Okay. What do you think? Oh, wow. There's so many excellent ones to choose from. Christmas. Christmas. 
There we go. There's a picture. Can I use that? It's up there. It is yours to use. Okay. I'll show you a cool feature of the GIMP, too. Here I am on our Flickr gallery. I'm going to right-click on the image and copy image URL. Let's bring up the GIMP. Okay. Right-click, file, open location, paste the URL, and it actually downloads it so we didn't have to save it on our computer. So Bitsprocket, there are so many cool filters that are available for the GIMP. If you right-click on your image, go filters, and you'll see there are a ton of different things. Okay, You can do all different kinds of things real quick, like if I want to duplicate that layer, filter, do a Gaussian blur, add a bit of a blur to that image, right? change it to an overlay, get some kind of, you know, a little bit of, yeah, it just kind of changes the way that the image looks, right? Give it that kind of surreal kind of look, add another layer, select feather. I'm doing this real quick because we're not actually learning this tonight. I just want to show you how quickly, when you know your way around, you can do some pretty neat stuff. So you see how we just kind of livened up that photo in like just a couple of seconds flat. Ta-da! Ta-da! Right? Okay. So Are you saying my photo was dull? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just <laughs> but there you go. Okay? Keep on your toes. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. I'm going to copy that to my clipboard. I'm going to create a new image. There we go. Okay. So I've got that. All right. Right click and go. Filters. Distorts. I warp. Okay, so you've used the Liquify plugin for Photoshop, mm -hmm. Photoshop being the commercial alternative, this being a free program here, GNU Image Manipulation Program. So with this iWarp plugin, I can now, you know, totally Krista change. Krista isn't smiling enough. Well, you know, come on, girl, <laughs> put a smile on your face. Oh. Am I allowed to do this? Am I going to yeah, get in trouble? No, Kay. no. I think it's, well, now that's rude. That is kind of rude, isn't it? <laughs> But here's the kind of stuff that you can do with iWarp. And it is very, very similar to Liquify in Photoshop. Okay. And basically all I'm doing is just grabbing portions of the image, giving it a bit of a stretch. And there you have it. Okay. So I could hit OK and we're done and done. Here's how it one-ups Photoshop. With Photoshop, if I wanted to animate that, I'd have to do a little bit at a time, duplicate the layer. A little bit more, mm -hmm. duplicate the layer, and then save it as an animated GIF. Right, mm -hmm. With the GIMP, all I have to do is click on Animate up at the top here, turn it on, and let's say we want to make it 25 frames. Okay, We'll do Ping Pong, and we'll hit OK. What that's going to do, see over on the right, it's creating a whole bunch of layers. So now, not only have we created our warp, but watch this. Filters, Animation, Playback. There's your picture. I'm going to hit play. <laughs> so you see how easy it is to create a really cool effect. <laughs> Goofy effect in this case. I'm <laughs> just kind of doing it real it's quick. like I have your really bad allergic reaction. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, she drank the soap. <laughs> that tool, I mean, <laughs> you can use it for silly stuff like that. And you've seen images like that where, you know, you stretch somebody's face out and it's hilarious and you can do some pretty funky stuff. But you can also use it to warp backgrounds. You can mm -hmm. make swirls and cool effects. You can also use it to, um, you know, the magazine covers. They use it to slim people and bring up the bust and do all this kind of stuff. All those kinds of uh, effects are created with the liquifier, in this case, the iWarp plugin. So very, very cool stuff. So that's one plugin for you. Uh, for tonight, I'll close that so it never Thanks. is never seen again. Except that it's, it's on the show viral. forever now. Yes. <laughs> forever. <laughs> That's the GIMP. It's GNU Image Manipulation Program, and you'll find that online at GIMP.org. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and again, we are online at Category5.tv. Cool. Questions, comments in the chat room at all? Cheers, King Arthur.
people asking about the <laughs> pardon me the cartoon that you saw a little bit earlier in the show you can actually get that off of our photo gallery as well if you missed it check out our photo gallery category 5.tv all right that is i warp what do you think oh it's fantastic <laughs> it's pretty cool thanks yeah all right <laughs> so tonight the theme is free alternatives to commercial software another piece of commercial software that you're going to need for your computer if you're on windows is microsoft office plain and simple right did you know that there are alternatives out there and we linux users we we know about this stuff we've got open office and LibreOffice has come out of that and so we know about these things because they come with our operating system but did you know that you can actually get these free office suites for your windows computer also your mac so what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring up a website here, LibraOffice.org. That's how it's spelled. And this suite of software gives you Calc, which is the equivalent of Excel, if you will. It's a spreadsheet program. Impress is the equivalent of PowerPoint. Presentations. Draw. Let's you do your diagramming and charting. Base is for databasing, kind of like access. Math is for doing your formulas for your documents, and so on and so forth, right? And the big one, writer, just like Microsoft Word. Here's the thing about LibreOffice. If you're concerned about installing an alternative to Microsoft Office, the, the biggest concern is usually, well, I need to be able to open files that are sent to me and vice versa. So here's the thing. I'm going to bring up, I'm just going to go to Google. And I'm going to go to, I'm going to do uh, Excel spreadsheet examples. I'm going to go to uh, the first one that comes up, xinfm.com. Okay, so here's a bunch of XLS files. I'll just click on the first one. Okay, so I've got it. There it is. So you see that this was actually created in Excel. It's an XLS file, just like your Excel files. And I'm going to double click on that. You'll notice that I have LibreOffice installed. And yet, it's going to open this Excel spreadsheet. And there we are. So, incredibly, we don't actually need Excel to open this Excel file. Let's create a new spreadsheet just so that you can see how similar this is. Right? It's pretty much. If, you're, if you've ever used Excel, it's pretty much exactly the same. Formulas, sums, it's very, very similar in its functionality. But watch this. File, save as, formats, okay? It has its default format, ODS, but then it also has Microsoft Excel format, Microsoft Excel templates, all these different formats you can save to CSV, comma separated values, all these Microsoft formats, see? So you can actually save again to an XLS file and send it to your buddy who only has Microsoft Excel and they'll be able to open it on their system. I do that all the time at work, transferring stuff back and forth. So then you get into LibreOffice Writer. This is where things get really exciting because it's, it's very much a clone of Microsoft Word. It gives you the ability to do word processing. And again, watch this, save as, and all formats, we have Microsoft Word document file, DOC, right? You can open them, you can open and save to docx. It's fantastic. I've opened docm files, no problem. So now you've got a free alternative to Microsoft Suite that the only thing it's missing is Outlook. Everything else is there. So you've got your spreadsheets, your, uh, your word processor. You've even got a PowerPoint alternative with Impress. And again, if you've ever used the Microsoft equivalent, you're going to find that it's, it's very, very similar. Not hard to learn at all. There we go. Ready to start creating my... Add a new slide. There we go. 
Even the hotkeys are the same. It's brilliant. So that is uh, LibreOffice, and it's available for a free download at LibreOffice.org. I'm going to take you there, and when we're on LibreOffice.org, you can actually go download. And you'll see that for me, it's defaulting to the Linux version, but you can go change system, version, or language, and you'll see that this is available for Windows, Mac, both Intel and PowerPC, and of course, Linux as well. LibreOffice is a free download. They are supported by donations. If you care to donate, if you're going to save a whole lot of money in your company to use this, there's a good opportunity for you to get something that's going to save you some money. Always give it a try before you go with the commercial product. See if it works for you. And then if, it, if you have any trouble, then you might consider going with the commercial alternative. Let's start with that. Fantastic stuff. LibreOffice.org. This is Category 5 Technology TV. And our website is category5.tv. Cool. Comments, questions in the chat room at this point? No, not a lot of questions. All right, folks. People comparing OpenOffice <laughs> to LibreOffice. Uh, OpenOffice was the original project, Sun Microsystems, um, based on um, their old um, office suite that they had. It was like the Sun Office or whatever it was called. I can't remember at this point, but back when I was a, a wee lad. It became open office was the free version, and then when Oracle bought out uh, Sun, it was uncertain what was going to happen to open office. So the community said, "Okay, well, let's create the the document foundation and let's create LibreOffice." And l even the name LibreOffice means the free office suite. So it's going to always remain that way. It's supported. It's under development, and it's going to continue to be under development by the open source community. So you don't have to worry about a big company like Oracle. Um, doing awful things to the uh, to the system, so that's why we're looking at LibreOffice tonight. Cool. Wanted to talk a little bit about security tonight. Uh, over the past few weeks, we've been talking in the studio about uh, um, phishing scams, mm -hmm. different scams that are out there that get into your email and trick you into clicking, and trick you into doing things that are dangerous to you as, as your computer user, or maybe to data collection, maybe to your identity. Identity theft is a serious thing, right? And lately, over the past couple of years, in, in fact, uh, it's really become a problem on the telephone where telemarketers or whoever these scammers are are going to pick up the phone, they're going to call you up, and they're going to say, you know, my name is, I'm calling from Microsoft, and um, we have been notified by your computer, which is connected to the internet, we've been notified that there's a, an exploit in your computer that mm -hmm. has to be patched, it has to be fixed. Otherwise, your data is at risk. You are, you know, there's scare tactics. Your data is at risk. Um, there are data collectors that are going to be able to pick up your credit card information. Uh, we would be, you know, we're Microsoft, we'd be willing to uh, fix that for you right now. There's no charge. You've already purchased Microsoft Windows, <laughs> um, so we'll take care. <coughs> pardon me. We'll take care of that for you. Here's the thing. It's not Microsoft. It's awful nice of them. So nice of them. <laughs> One, Microsoft doesn't do <laughs> nice things. Two, they're not going to do it for free. Mm -hmm. Where's the money in that, right? Here's the thing: is that these people, and and it's unfortunate, but a lot of people are falling for this, and it's happening. Like it's growing. And this is why I wanted to bring it up. It's growing because people are falling for it. Don't fall for it. If anyone phones you and starts talking to you about personal stuff, your computer is personal, right? If somebody says, you know, anything, it's interesting. I got that call. <laughs> I don't use <laughs> Windows. What are you talking about? Okay. But, and I had a customer who actually three-way called me because Microsoft was on the line. Oh, man. <laughs> and this customer said to me, um, Robbie, this, this uh, gentleman from Microsoft it, it has, is letting us know that we've got an exploit and they need to fix it, but I don't know our password to get into the system. Oh, she was, good thing. She was this close. <laughs> she was this close. I said, hang up the phone right now and call me back. Get this person off the line. Do not give them any information. Okay. Because what happens is they say, okay, well, we'll fix it for you. All you have to do is go to this one website. It looks very official. It's all mm -hmm. Microsoft, right? Download this one file. It's going to allow us to patch your computer. Nuh -uh. It gives them remote access to your computer 
so that they can exploit codes so that they can send out mass email but here's the real bad thing they can monitor keystrokes they can get your credit card information your personal information your files remember you're on high speed internet so as soon as you give access to that kind of thing there you have it right and people are falling for it so if anyone calls you like that always just you know politely hang up on them <laughs> <laughs> politely mm-hmm you got to watch out for this kind of stuff because they're very convincing. The emails that come in, they're very convincing. These phone calls that sound very official. We're calling from Microsoft. We, we've got a notification here that your computer is being exploited. We need to get this fixed for you. We're going to do it for you, and, and we'll take care of it. All you need to do is this. They may even say, you know, well, we need to install some software. They may say that we need your credit card number. We need this or that. Not likely. Because they know that they can get that if all you do is download this file, if all you do is allow them access to your computer. It's dangerous stuff. So be wary. Mm -hmm. And if you are ever concerned, I'll just say this. Email live at category5.tv and you know, forward us email. Um, ask us the question. Say, look, I got this call. Is it real? And we'll be happy to look into it. Be careful, mm -hmm. folks. We want to see you safe on, online. And those kind of things, of course. Um, you know, the Windows thing, if you're a Windows user, sure, they're going to make you download a Windows file. Phishing scams, though, they can get anyone. doesn't matter whether you're on Windows, Mac, Linux, or a tablet. Phishing scams can get your data, right? Because they trick you. They trick you into entering credit card information to get a, a piece of software or whatever it is. So watch out. Thanks, everybody. Cheers, Maxwell. <laughs> Just watching the chat room here, and we welcome you to, to join us there. Did I miss any questions? If I did, uh, please email us live at category5.tv. So, where does this leave you? You're back at school? Yeah, I leave you for another, what is it, two months? Is I, it really? I guess. Oh. And then are you done? No, I have another semester oh for the summer. Yeah. So you go like two months... And then and I'll have you like pay us a visit. Yeah. Then two more months. Yeah, and I'll come back again. Yeah. And you know, make sure when everyone's everyone's over? all right. And uh, and my next semester should be done August. August. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a long time. I know. And uh, what's going to be different here at the studio? Uh, when, I'll when be smarter. Back? I will look smarter. I will say smarter things. I'll read the news better. The viewers see doubt in my eyes. <laughs> a lot has changed around here, too, and, and viewers don't necessarily see this backstage pass. Mm. Of course, you do, but uh, you notice it. I came in here, and I was surrounded by monitors, and, you know, like, the tablet is here now, and right. there's yeah, these little the, she's not vibrating using, bugs here. Not even the, using a, a mouse oh, tonight. Well, it's it's like, yeah, she's she's like all graphic designer. I don't need a mouse. I Picks up the, the pen, pen and starts writing with her. Someone's got to put pen. Robbie in his place. <laughs> I tried writing with my pen, but it just, just doesn't marked work. it up. <laughs> marked it up. <laughs> the smiley faces here. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Not an Apple tablet, Dave Maydew. This is the, uh, <laughs> the Wacom, Wacom Graphire Four. Intuos. Or Intuos Four. Intuos pardon me. Four. I I was around in the Graphire days, so that, You're not that's the to Intuos. Say things like Sorry. That. That was my first tablet, the Graphite. <laughs> nice stuff. Thanks, everybody, for joining us tonight. It's super good to see you. Nice to see you as Yeah, always. well, when you only see me, like, once every two months, it can't be that bad, right? <laughs> Krista yeah. in little bits is okay. Once every two months, we can handle it. It's okay, yeah. Yeah, we can handle that. Yeah. Yeah. Hope, uh, hope you had fun tonight as well. We're just about out of time, so don't forget cartoon, everything else available in our photo gallery at category5.tv by our very talented cartoonist, Rachel Shu. And uh, don't forget, also, the beta for the new website. If you're in the chat room, you'll see how to do that. Dave Maydu, thanks. Mark M. Kiwi Tux. And uh, everybody joining us in the chat room. <laughs> if you say hi, I say hi back. Scorpio55, nice to see you. That's all the time that we have. You have fun tonight? Yeah, it was good. It was good, except for the points where you made fun of me. I never do that. Only as soon as the camera's only off. Only a lot. As soon as okay, the camera's yeah. off, folks. 
Have a great week. And uh, Eric Kidd will be in next Tuesday night. And we're going to have a good time then as well. So great. take care. We'll talk See to you, you soon. Bye.